Hey everyone, welcome back to Insightful Jan, your ultimate destination for everything comic books. I'm Jan, and today, I'm excited to share with you a special wrap-up of my May reading journey. Over the past month, I've immersed myself in about 100 individual comic book issues, and I've got a lot to talk about. From the gritty streets of Old Man Logan to the vampire-infested world of Blood Hunt, the thrilling escapades of Gun Honey, Collision Course, and the epic adventures in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IDW Collection Volumes 14 and 15. It's been an amazing ride. If you're a fan of comic books and love diving into new stories, you're in the right place. Stick around as I take you through my favorite reads. Trust me, you won't want to miss this. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. Give this video a thumbs up if you're as excited as I am about these amazing comics, and leave a comment below sharing what you've been reading this month. Let's get into it. Let's start with White Boat, number one by Scott Snyder and Francesco Francavilla, published by Distillery. The cover art by Francavilla is stunning and sets a mysterious tone with underwater imagery and hints of mysticism. The story revolves around luxurious mega yachts that promise paradise but hide a dark secret. Passengers are trapped and transported to a remote island where ancient cults conduct the human project. This blend of horror, thriller, and mystery is perfect for fans of Hereditary, Jurassic Park, and The Island of Dr. Morrow. The first issue is packed with backstory and atmosphere, thanks to Francavilla's masterful use of color and light. Snyder's storytelling starts off relatable and gradually descends into eerie chaos. We follow Lee, the main character, dealing with personal loss while exploring the eerie ship, which feels both claustrophobic and mysterious. The pacing is excellent, and the oversized format of distillery books adds to the immersive experience. White Boat is a must-read for fans of thriller and horror comics. Whether you pick it up in physical or digital form, it's a fantastic addition to your collection. Next up in my May comic reviews is Blood Hunt, number one by Jed McKay, a thrilling new event for Marvel. In Blood Hunt, vampires become a major threat in the Marvel Universe. A vampire cult blacks out the sun, unleashes vampiric hordes, and decimates half of the Avengers with a gruesome kill squad. This intense and fast-paced story grabs your attention from the start, diving right into the action and chaos. The issue is steeped in Marvel history, but accessible for new readers. It references past events involving Doctor Strange, Moon Knight, Blade, and more, but you can jump right in without any prior knowledge. The sun blackout and vampire attacks are depicted quickly, setting the stage for a relentless and engaging narrative. Pepe Lera's artwork is a standout, particularly in character designs for the Blood Coven, the six terrifying vampire antagonists. However, the inky, murky style can sometimes make action scenes hard to follow, especially during the intense Avengers vs. Blood Coven battles. There's a significant twist at the end, adding a bold new direction for one of Marvel's iconic characters. While it's only the first issue, Blood Hunt starts strong, promising an exciting journey through the summer. Blood Hunt No. 1 is a must-read for fans of superhero horror. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I've also read Blood Hunt No. 2 by Jed McKay, with art by Pepe Leras and colors by Marte Garcia and Ica C.O.R. The art in this issue is fantastic, with Lara's character design standing out, especially for the Blood Coven. However, the inky, murky style can make some action scenes hard to follow, which is a bit distracting. The story continues with intense action as Blade battles the Avengers. There's a feeling that the book is trying too hard to tie in various elements, which can make the plot feel scattered. Blade is positioned as the main antagonist, while the Blood Coven seems to exist more for their cool appearance than any substantial impact. There's a notable moment where Blade's daughter comes into play, showcasing some interesting dynamics and cool character design. However, the pacing can feel off, with a lot happening quickly without much depth. The Blood Coven, while intriguing, lacks proper introduction and background, which would have made their appearances more impactful. The second issue has its highs and lows. While the action is thrilling and the characters are interesting, the story sometimes feels disjointed. Despite these issues, Blood Hunt No. 2 remains a solid read for fans of superhero horror. Next up in my May comic reviews is Gun Honey, Collision Course, 
Number 1 by Charles Ardai, with art by Ong Hor King, colors by Joao Rodri, and letters by David Leach, published by Titan Comics. Joanna Tan, known as Gun Honey, is a smuggler with a unique talent. She can sneak any gun anywhere. After being off the grid for nearly a year due to a botched job and a government agent's help, Joanna is back with a plan to clear their names. She has an insurance policy set up a year earlier to release damaging information if she goes missing. Now, she must help her colleague and his son, who are in dire need of her skills. This issue is packed with action and excitement, keeping up the pace and intensity of the previous volumes. Ong Ho King's artwork is stunning, and the vibrant colors by Joao Rodri, along with David Leach's lettering, enhance the neo-noir atmosphere perfectly. New readers can jump in without worry, as the afterword provides a helpful recap of the story so far. However, longtime fans will appreciate the continuation of the thrilling narrative that has made this series so popular. Gun Honey, Collision Course No. 1 is a must-read for fans of action-packed, neo-noir comics. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Next up in my May comic reviews is Spider-Gwen, The Ghost Spider, No. 1 by Stephanie Phillips, with art by Federica Manson, colors by Matt Milla, and letters by Ariana Marr, published by Marvel Entertainment. As a longtime fan of Spider-Gwen, I was excited to dive into this issue. Gwen Stacy, aka Spider-Gwen, is now permanently in Earth-616, where the original Gwen passed away. This new setting creates a unique dynamic, especially since Gwen isn't allowed to reveal her presence to her friends like Peter Parker, Miles Morales, and Silk, due to rules set by the TVA, Time Variance Authority. Ouroboros, or OB, is Gwen's TVA representative, guiding her and ensuring she follows the rules to stay safe. However, Gwen struggles with these restrictions and secretly plans to continue being Spider-Gwen. Stephanie Phillips' writing is captivating, raising intriguing questions about the TVA's intentions, Gwen's relationships, and her future as a hero in this new universe. The storyline promises multiple exciting directions, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. The artwork by Federica Manson is stunning, perfectly capturing the energy and style of a Spider-Gwen story. The vibrant colors and dynamic action scenes, especially Gwen swinging through the city, are visually striking. The contrast between Gwen and the villain at the end of the comic enhances the dramatic tension of their encounter. Overall, Spider-Gwen, the Ghost Spider No. 1 is an exhilarating star to this new series. The combination of compelling writing and beautiful art makes it a must-read for any Spider-Gwen fan. I'm eagerly anticipating the next installment. Next up, I'm reviewing the complete run of Old Man Logan, Volume 2 from 2016, which spans 50 issues and an annual, written by Jeff Lemire and Ed Brisson, with art by Andrea Sorrentino and Mike Deodato. I received the first three issues of the Old Man Logan, Scarlet Samurai, Arc, issues number 31, number 32, and number 33, from a friend. Reading those issues piqued my interest so much that I opened my Marvel Unlimited app and read the entire series. Old Man Logan picks up with Logan navigating a world he doesn't fully recognize, but one he hopes to protect from the same fate as his original timeline. While you don't need to have read Mark Miller and Steve McNiven's Wolverine, Old Man Logan, it does enhance the experience. Personally, I hadn't read Miller and McNiven's original story before diving into this arc, and it didn't bother me at all. You can jump right in and enjoy the story. Jeff Lemire starts the series, delivering a powerful exploration of a weary Logan trying to prevent the tragedies of his past from repeating. Lemire's writing shines in Logan's internal struggles, capturing the essence of a man out of time. From issue number 25, Ed Brisson takes over, maintaining the same gritty tone while adding his own flavor. Both writers handle the character with respect, ensuring his complex persona is consistently compelling. Andrea Sorrentino's art in the first half of the series is nothing short of breathtaking. His unique panel layouts and intense visual style bring a haunting, almost cinematic quality to the story. Mike Deodato's work in the latter issues complements the narrative with equally striking visuals, maintaining the series' dark and gritty atmosphere. The combination of their art styles with the color work of Matt Milla and others ensures the series is visually stunning throughout. Key arcs like The Last Ronin and Past Lives stand out, 
providing deep dives into Logan's psyche and his relentless quest for redemption. The series also features exciting crossovers with other Marvel characters, adding layers to Logan's journey in the main Marvel universe. The final issues in the annual provide a satisfying conclusion, tying up loose ends and honoring Logan's legacy. I have to admit, I wasn't a big Wolverine fan before reading this story, but Old Man Logan has changed my perspective. The series delivers an emotional, action-packed narrative that explores themes of redemption, loss, and survival. Both the writing and the art are top-notch, making this run a standout in Marvel's lineup. This story has made me love the character so much more, and I'm pretty sure I'll be reading more Wolverine stories in the future. If you've read it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm wrapping up my May reviews with a quick summary of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IDW Collection Volumes 14 and 15. I've reviewed these in separate videos on my channel, so be sure to check those out for more in-depth thoughts. Volume 14 collects issues 101 to 112 and picks up after the City at War arc. It's packed with intense action and rich storytelling as the Turtles face the aftermath and the looming threat of the Rat King. The character development is phenomenal, with each turtle getting their moment to shine. Leonardo struggles with leadership, Donatello's intelligence is tested, Michelangelo's humor lightens the mood, and Raphael remains his fiery, loyal self. The supporting cast, including April, Casey, and Jenica, add depth and richness to the narrative. The artwork is vibrant and dynamic, capturing the essence of the TMNT universe perfectly. Volume 15 collects issues 113 to 124 and is a real game changer. The Turtles are now in Mutant Town, a quarantined area for mutants in New York City. This volume delves deep into the emotional and psychological aspects of the characters. Leonardo steps back from leadership to find balance. Donatello navigates technological and ethical challenges. Michelangelo brings hope to the community, and Raphael wrestles with anger and trust issues. Jenica continues her journey from Foot Clan assassin to Turtle Hero, and Alopex grows closer to the team. The artwork is spectacular, with intense action sequences and beautifully done quieter moments. The themes of change, identity, and resilience are powerfully explored, making this a standout volume. Both volumes are must-reads, packed with action, emotion, and stunning artistry. Whether you're a longtime fan or new to the series, these volumes won't disappoint. It's been an incredible month of reading here at Insightful Jan, and I can't wait to share what's next. This May, I've delved into about 100 individual comic book issues, from the intense Old Man Logan series to the action-packed Blood Hunt and the thrilling Gun Honey collision course. And let's not forget the fantastic adventures in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IDW Collection Volumes 14 and 15. Each story has been a unique journey, filled with incredible art, gripping narratives, and unforgettable characters. Reading these comics has been an absolute joy, and I'm thrilled to share my thoughts and insights with all of you. I'm even more excited about what June has in store. There are so many more stories to explore, and I can't wait to dive in and bring you along for the ride. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Your comments, likes, and subscriptions mean the world to me. If you enjoyed these reviews, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment below letting me know your favorite comic book moment from this month or what you're looking forward to reading next. Stay tuned, because there's a lot more to come. As always, keep reading, keep collecting, and stay awesome. Catch you next time comic book fans.